Hey guys, welcome to Tack and Track. I'm Brad. And I'm Gil. Today we're going to be talking about the Cimarron Uberti Stoger Model 1873. Uh, this gun right here is got the color case finish, it's got the brass back strap. Really beautiful firearm at a great price point. Um, we always cover firearms in five different categories. The first one we're going to get to is value. Now, these are going about 450 these days. Um, you can find them at Bass Pro. That's, that's where we found this one. Um, 450 bucks in this finish, 357 Magnum or 38 Special, six round capacity. Um, I don't know. Great value to me. And this is something that set aside the fact that it's a firearm. When we're looking at value here, and just look at it as a piece of artwork, yeah. I think it's it's got a fair amount of value there. Now, when we talk about value, we always talk about resale, historical value, collectability. This has no historical no. value. Yeah. Right. It, it is cool. It is like a piece of American history, but it, it, it's modern. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't have any of the case history that goes with it. It's not going to increase in value like some no. firearms. But at its price point, it's a fantastic shooter. Um, I really think it, it's a fairly good value. Yeah, and uh, MSRP on these, uh, we looked that up, it was about 600 bucks. Like I said, they're going for about 450. You might even be able to find them pre-owned cheaper than that. Um, even in the pandemic, I mean, I, uh, this one's, I don't know, maybe six months ago. So the very middle of the pandemic so far, who knows how long it'll last anyways. There's <laughs> that. Um, but this is a, a great price point for something like this. Now it is not gonna increase in value and there are a few little drawbacks to it. Um, for one, I don't feel like the trigger is, the trigger is great the way it feels, but it's very thin, it looks a little flimsy, it's a lot thinner than the one on the Vaquero, which feels very good in the hand. This one is a little bit tighter. Um, so I don't know if it'll hold up quite as well, something like that, but you know, you're not going to be doing 10,000 rounds through something like this. Um, and I, I really don't see any problems if you do with it. Ten thousand rounds through that, you've spent way more in ammunition than you did in the gun. You can afford to replace it. And, and I mean, it, seriously though, it the price point is super attractive on this thing. Yeah, and they used to go for a lot cheaper than that. You used to be able to pick one up in forty-five long call for like one hundred eighty bucks. Uh, but that was some years ago. Now about four fifty is what you're going to be looking at. Which brings us to our value score of 3.5. And uh, while that doesn't sound terribly high, uh, for the guns that we've got in this category, that's pretty good value. Um, you know, it, it's not high capacity or anything, so when, when we cover value, that often factors into it, um, which brought it down a little bit, but a 3.5 on something like this uh, is fantastic value. Yeah, it's, it's kind of useless for a home defense or personal defense firearm, but it's a great shooter. Yeah, a lot of fun to own. Um, our next category is ease of use. Again, it's a revolver. Yep. You can pick one up if you've ever watched a movie. Uh, you can pick one up and operate it. They're incredibly easy to use. Don't this, watch Russ to figure out how to operate one. Please don't do that. Um, open the loading gate. This one you do have to cock the hammer back in order to take the shells out and put new ones in. That's different from the Vaquero where all you have to do is open the loading gate. I don't prefer this. Yeah, that, that's a feature that I don't like. Um, I'm not real comfortable with single actions or revolvers in general. It's just not something I shoot all that often. And that's one thing that makes me a little bit nervous and then I just, I, I don't like, right? Um, I have the general opinion that if you're pulling a hammer back, you're ready to use your firearm. Right. And we'll show you a comparison of these two on the hammer as well. So if you've got the hammer back on this one, the Vaquero, you'll notice it's flat. Um, this one has the firing pin as part of the hammer. I don't like that either. Um, I think that could get caught on something. I think you could break this a lot easier. It does feel replaceable. It looks like you can punch out a pin and put a new one in there, but 
don't know. Does this have a safety crossbar on it? No, no transfer crossbar. You're supposed to carry these um, with only five in them and have the uh, top one not loaded. I don't like that either. Uh, and yeah. I'm certainly not going to do that because... With a firing pin like that, you do run a serious risk of, if you have it loaded with six rounds, dropping it. Uh, even with the hammer all the way forward, you run a risk of actually setting a round off um, if you were to drop it on the hammer back here. Mm -hmm. That's not particularly great, but as far as the actual operation of the firearm, yeah, it's quite easy to use, right? It's, yeah. It's really simple, open the lift gate, open the loading gate there, stick a round in, rotate it again, stick another one in, pull the trigger, right? Yeah, it's... Taking them apart's easy. You just pull your injector rod out, and it comes apart. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that. I say ejection rod. I'm sure there's a different name for it because it's not the actual ejection rod, but holds the cylinder into place. There's a little spring-loaded detent here. Push it in, and it'll come out. So we gave this one a uh, ease of use score of four, which for us is really, really pretty high. Yeah. So uh, very easy to use. Yeah, one thing that did take it back, and we covered this in the Vaquero, the hammer, as you're bringing it back, this one has three clicks. And if you don't get it all the way down to that last one, it'll pop back on you to the, to the first click. Now it won't engage the round once you've got it past that first click. If you get it there, it, it won't go back in front of that. But if you get to the second one, it wants to come forward again. You got to get it all the way down. You basically just have to use it pretty judiciously. Uh, yeah, and this is makes fanning rather difficult. Um, it, it's certainly it not as easy as the Chapas or the Vaquero mm -hmm. to fan. Yeah. Um, but let's be honest, you probably shouldn't be fanning. I, I know we all do it. It's fun, but it's not fun, a realistic it's, use. It's inaccurate at best. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so our next category is fun factor. Um, wow, a lot of fun here. It's a revolver. Uh, if you want to feel like a cowboy, this is the gun to do it in. Um, Brad, what do you think of this gun? Yeah, so revolvers aren't my thing. I mean, that's no secret. We've talked about it uh, more than once. Um, this is a gun that is a lot of fun to pick up. Um, it, it definitely has that classic Americana feel to it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. Gil's got this goofy holster thing that he likes a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's something fun about drawing a single action like this out and shooting it. Um, it, it is a blast. Um, I typically tor tend to lean towards high capacity, semi-automatic, nine millimeters with great triggers and red dots. And this is a world of change yeah. from that. Yet it's still fun. It's very grassroots. I mean, yeah. it's back to basics of shooting. Um, and any single action is, well, most single actions are gonna have a fairly light trigger. This one's no exception. Uh, very crisp trigger pull, uh, which makes it fun. Um, other than that. One thing that I will say here is there's there's something really fun about fanning a revolver like this. This one doesn't fan well. Yeah, and you know, you shouldn't be fanning. Uh, we all do it. Anyways, this one, because of the hammer, the things we discussed earlier about it, not engaging all the way at the bottom, um, you really got to crank down on it if you're going to do something like that. This is a much better gun to use your your left thumb to pull it down as you're shooting rather than trying to slap it down. But it, it's a lot of fun. It's enjoyable. Um, once again, capacity is limited. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast, right? right? Um, really probably shouldn't have more than five in it. Yes, you can put six in the safety and conditions of a range. Right. Um, but, you know, that is what it is. And, and if you're looking at one of these to buy one, you knew that before you clicked on our video. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's just part of it. And if you are thinking about buying one, do watch some videos on um, how to properly hold one of these. Uh, if you're shooting a gun like a Glock, you're going to hold it a lot higher. 
than you are one of these. You also want to make sure to keep your fingers away from uh, the front of the cylinder here. As gas escapes, it can, uh, it'll shock you. It's not going to blow your finger off, but it'll shock you a little bit. And you'll, you'll know you did it later that day. I have done it myself. Um, just being a little more careless than I should have been. Um, so do watch a video on how to properly use one of these. There's a lot of professionals out there that do fast draw competitions, stuff like that. They can give you some really good pointers. And at some point in the near future when we're talking about cylinder gap, um, my Nagant revolver mm -hmm. is uh, on its way back from uh, getting the suppressor mount added. And we'll look at gas sealed versus ungas sealed revolvers. So check out the Nagant video when it comes out. It'll probably be a few months from the time this one releases because um, we'll have a suppressed revolver with no gas yeah. seal. How often do you see that? Uh, back to this gun, we're going to give it a fun factor of 3.1 out of 5. And, of course, we took into consideration the lower capacity here. Um, that really dings pretty much all of these revolvers. You can get 8-shot revolvers, but they're not common in single action. Um, so we're going to give this one a 3.1, which brings us to our last category, accuracy. What would you find out in accuracy, Brad? So this... This is accurate, especially compared to the new Vaquero. I, I was actually able to pick this up as not a single action revolver guy, be able to pick it up out of the box and be able to shoot decently well with it. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually fairly impressed that the trigger's pretty good. Um, it certainly performs well there. Now, with all of these, we have the sights. They're not great. They're not going to be great. You shouldn't expect them to be great. They are what they are. If you changed this to a site that was great, you probably wouldn't want it because it wouldn't look right. It wouldn't yeah. feel right. Um, you know, you're not going to mount a Holosun 507C up top on this. It That's all wrong. But really, overall... I was fairly impressed with the accuracy that we were able to get out of this, especially for a guy like me who this isn't what he's trained on. I haven't put a lot of rounds through these. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar and I'm able to pick it up and use it fairly well. Yeah. Uh, on the dueling tree, um, I used both of these in a round and got maybe one or two out of six with that one. and five or six out of six with this one. It really is a pretty accurate uh, gun, especially at its price point, um, the yeah, distance it's... of accuracy that you can have with this. Mm -hmm. Being a five and a half inch barrel, it does give you a uh, good witness here. So pretty accurate gun. We're gonna give it a, a 3.2 out of five. Which brings our overall score to 3.62 for the Cimarron, Uberti, Stoger, Model 1873. Yeah, I really feel like if you're looking for a single action uh, in 357, that this is an excellent buy, right? Um, if you're looking for a concealed carry weapon, of course it's not, guys. But if you're looking for a, a single action in 357, it's got a really attractive price point. It is absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It Very might great. be worth buying just to hang on the wall. Yep, um, and I think, you know, if I, if I only had to have one between this one and the new Vaquero, um, I think anyone else would probably choose this. I may still go for the Vaquero because I just love that gun for some reason, even though I can't hit with it. But this is an excellent choice and the one I think most people would and should make because if you're just going to have one and you're not looking at spending that much money, this is a really highly rated gun from us. Um, it's actually higher than the Vaquero, um, and actually, a lot of that's due to accuracy. You could buy the Uberti, the two Choppas, and the Barkeep for less than the new Vaquero. You could have several uh, that's, instead of buying that's a great, It's a great value, guys. Yeah. yeah. So, if you're looking for one and you're on a budget, it's a great choice. So we're going to have some video of us shooting this gun and some of these others um, that we'll throw up here for you to watch. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Tack and Track. Be sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.
what's interesting is the box says Cimarron, the gun says Stoger and Uberti, model 73, 357. Let's see if we can hit. Now you said that was in 1873. Was that the year Miss Carol was born? 